Uh, we are very pleased to have him here, obviously. Uh, odds are good that Andrew has not only inspired a lot of people in the audience today, but has taught us a great deal. So, without further ado, please help me in welcoming the man of the hour, Mr. Andrew Craig. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much. Um, question. How many of you guys have seen a movie, all right, a visual effect, a, a motion design, graphics, and thought to yourself, that was the most amazing thing I've ever seen. There's no way I'm ever going to be able to do something that incredible. Anybody? I, I got my hand up. You know, see some of the stuff ILM does, some of the stuff you see just from individual artists creating incredible stuff. So, Here's the thing, I looked at uh, some stats of all you guys, and apparently there's 80% of you are into motion graphics or visual effects, and 20% of you are into lens flares. <laughs> I would think that number was a little higher, but that's okay. Uh, I'm glad you're here anyway. So, visual effects designers, let me ask you something. Did you think to yourself, I want to be the most average designer in the world. <laughs> How can I be the most mediocre person? Oh, this would be so great. This would be my dream. Any, one guy? It's okay. So, of course not. And that's why you guys are here. You know, that's why you're here, because you're motivated. And, and so I want you guys to think back to what got you motivated into this industry? What got you into graphics? Was it a movie? Was it a, a design? Was your parents said, get out, get a job? I want to talk to you guys about what I think is the most important thing in becoming a successful designer. Things that I've learned uh, through, through my career and the things that I think about to help me have a more successful career in the future. Because right now we're motivated, but how do we keep this motivation for the long haul? So let's get started. Now usually I'm behind a computer and uh, I don't get to see all of your beautiful, lovely faces, but uh, today I'm just going to do a keynote. So let's uh, skip, watch this, wait for it. Technology. <laughs> time management. Time management. Has anyone wasted time before? <laughs> Go ahead, put your hand up. So, so a few of you. So a few of you. That's okay. Uh, we all waste time. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's tough not to waste time. We've got DVR. We've got all these uh, great web videos, amazing tutorials. Um, <laughs> however, let's see here. This is the more important thing. How do we manage how much time we waste? Because that's the critical thing. If we can eliminate the, you know, the hours of, of constant waste, we might even be able to get to Jean-Claude Van Damme status. You know what I'm talking about? Anyone ever seen this movie, Time Cop? That makes, so you're the four who's seen it. Good. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to talk about prioritizing time. Um, you know, I've got a family. Uh, I think I started Video Copilot a little bit before I got married, actually. And so, you know, we've kind of been growing a little bit. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about prioritizing time. And, you know, that's a, big, that's a big thing. You know, I work at Bad Robot. You know, we work on movies. You know, that's hectic, as some of you guys may know. Uh, I run Video Copilot. So we're doing products. We're doing tutorials, software, you know, replying to comments. And, uh, you know, one of the, the, the thing that you know, I want to admit is that when I first started Video Copilot, I didn't make my family a big a priority as I should have. And it's easy to let that kind of thing happen. If you don't figure out what your priorities are, what is the things that are most important to you? Obviously design is, and, and you know, that's of course. But in my case, my family was really important to me. And I didn't think about that at the time because, I, you know, I thought, you know what's most important? I need to work as hard as I can, staying up hours and hours, staying up all night, I thought, if I'm building my business, if I'm growing this, I can create a successful life for our family. And it wasn't, and, and our daughter was born, and I didn't realize that that just wasn't the right, that wasn't the right decision. And luckily I realized it early enough to where I've made it a priority in my life now. And I get to hang out with uh, my beautiful family, and this is Katie, our oldest, and then Josh is somewhere inside of the, uh, on the left there. <laughs> um, and it's good too, I take my wife, we go on dates, you know, go to the movies. You know, we go see what I want to see, of course. I say, honey, sorry, your, uh, your movie's sold out, you know. And she's like, you don't even know what the name of my movie is. I'm like... <laughs> 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 uh, 
I gotta go to work, all right? Not doing it. Um, yeah, so, it's, uh, <laughs> I'm not allowed to do the family portrait anymore, so, unfortunately. I mean, you know, I didn't want to overdo it. My wife said, tone it down a bit. I said, all right, I'll take the lens flares out, but that's it. <laughs> All right, so uh, anybody, uh, anybody a gamer? A few, few gamers? Um, the new Doom. <laughs> Four bit. It's uh, amazing, amazing. Um, okay, I've got a little story about gaming. Uh, so I'm not a major gamer, but there was a time when Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare came out. And uh, it was a winter afternoon, and I was... No. It came out, and, and I played the demo, and I'm playing the game, and this was like right in the beginning of Video Copilot, right? We had action movie essentials out. That was the previous, uh, you know, stock footage pack. So I'm playing Call of Duty, having a great time, and I'm thinking, I'm like shooting guys, and like, you know, blood is spattering everyone. I'm like, wait a second. This blood looks familiar, you know, because I've been looking at the blood from our pack. So I screen capture, this is such an important story, that's why I'm telling you it. So I screen capture the video, right? And I go through all the clips. There's only like 10 of them. And I'm like, no, it's not that one. No, it's not that one. And then, long and behold, I find it. I'm like, hey, they use our blood. I'm like, now I have to play this game. Uh, there's, uh, there's no other way. I have to play this game. I have to. Uh, you know, and then, and then uh, one thing happened was, you know the Steam counter? It like, tells you how much like, of your life you've wasted, how many hours you've played. And I was like, I've got to change. I've got to do something. So. Gaming is awesome, but you know, one, one thing I had to do is I had to literally like uninstall it, like, because it's like 10 gigs, so at least if I had to install it again, it would take you know, like 45 minutes, and that's a little bit prohibitive to be like, mm, I'll just get some work done. Here's another one. <laughs> Distractions, all right? So how many, uh, you know, we, we don't really watch commercials, right? Because we have our DVR, we record. I mean, I would pause certain commercials, of course, but. <laughs> You know, we have DVR, we have, you know, we have on-demand, we have related videos, we have all of these sources of, of content, of time-wasting content. And it's amazing, incredible. And Video Copa, it's so much good stuff. But <laughs> it can be a little bit of a problem because, you know, you can sometimes trick yourself into thinking you're doing something productive. Like, I'll, I'll give you an example. Like, when I was playing Call of Duty, my handle was videocopilot.net, so I wasn't playing, I was marketing. <laughs> You know, people are like, what's Video Copilot done at? I'm like, hey, here's a coupon code. <laughs> um, <laughs> shoot. I was going to get to that. I was, I was definitely going to get to that, and I forgot. Uh, procrastinate. I mean, what can I say about it? I mean, this is, this is something that I think affects us all. You know, I try not to look at procrastinating as like the worst thing in the world, because I don't think it is. I think it's a time where your energies are really focused because you don't want to be fired, and you really find those creative juices to finish a project. So I don't think procrastinating is, is the worst thing, but I think there are better ways to procrastinate. So say you have a week, two weeks to do something. Start the project. Just get it started, right? See kind of what's going on. Get a comp open. Start laying it out. So at least you know what the name of the project is, and that way, like at the last minute, you're not asking, like, hey, yeah, I started, but what, what was it called again? <laughs> I want to make sure I have the same thing. Uh, so just think about better ways to procrastinate. That's my advice to you. Be lazy, but just don't be super lazy. <laughs> no, uh, of course, it's all about time management, because if you can manage to control how much time you know, you're wasting, you have an opportunity to learn some really cool stuff. So uh, I don't know if anyone remembers this video. We, I was in the trunk of a car. This picture reminded me of the idea of when I first started Video Copilot, and that was I only used the built-in plugins of After Effects. So I sort of created limits on what I was allowed to use. I wasn't allowed to use this plugin, or I wasn't allowed to use stock footage, or I wasn't allowed to use another software. You start thinking about new ways to use it. You start saying, hmm, let me. So that's why if you watch some of my older tutorials, even some of the more current ones, I try to find unique, interesting ways to use old plugins, or you know, not old plugins, but just the plugins that come built in, because I want to, one, show people like 
how much more you can do with these plugins. And also, it's good for people who are getting started, you know, and it's, oh, now I have to buy that plugin, or I have to buy that plugin. You're able to just get in there and, uh, and start doing stuff. So, here we go. Sam Loya making a cameo. <laughs> making mistakes. Okay, tutorials are great, but they're, they're sort of sterile in a way. A lot of the technical problems have sort of been sorted out to make the tutorial concise, 20, 25 minutes, right? Uh, some of the, you know, in fact, the clips are typically selected because they don't require a lot of setup, a lot of fixing, a lot of preparation because, you know, it's not that fun to have to deal with tracking issues or keying issues. You know, you want to get to the key, you know, to the main aspect of the tutorial. But if you're learning, that's not necessarily as helpful to you. And that's why I think when you, when you learn by doing stuff, when you actually go out, you film something, you bring that back, you're able to see, hey, I've got a problem here and now I need to figure out what to do. And tutorials are great, but you always want to think about how can you apply them to your own work? How can you take what that is and, and find ways to make it work for you? I couldn't find a higher resolution, I'm sorry. <laughs> Choosing the right software, okay? Uh, sometimes it feels like there's different, so many different options. You don't want to pick the wrong software. You don't know what version. Um, you know, I, I think it's more important to think about the techniques of what you're doing. You know, like, obviously, After Effects gives you all of these opportunities to do all of these different things. But if you want to add a 3D program into your workflow, you know, there's a lot of different options. You feel like, oh, is it this one or is it that one? Don't overthink it, you know. Get Cinema 4D, get 3D Max, just get in there and start creating something. Because by the time you decide what software to pick, you know, you could have already started to learn one pretty well. And the techniques of 3D uh, translate very well, so you're not throwing away your time by learning one software versus another software. You're just, you're learning techniques. Give yourself a better chance to understand the techniques of 3D and make your workflow stronger. Problem solving. Tom Hanks, obviously, Forrest Gump, great movie. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I've actually got a couple of slides for this because I personally think that problem solving is the number one most important thing for a designer and a visual effects artist. You have to know how to problem solve. There's absolutely no way that the shots you get and the work you have to do is going to be straightforward and, you know, easy. Like, wow, they shot this perfectly. The key is clean and what a great day. I'm going to take off early. <laughs> There's no way. There's no way. So actually, I have more than one slide. That's how important this is. Problem solving, okay? Harrison Ford, Indiana Jones, what's he doing? Exactly. Fixing that problem right there. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When I pick this one, I'm like, this is going to work or it's not. He puts the thing down, right? What happens? He's like, hey, all right, I'm taking the day off. Ah, but ball comes crashing down, darts, his friend betrays him. I don't want to spoil the movie, but. <laughs> all right, and uh, one more. What doesn't MacGyver do? <laughs> All right. This is a good one right here, actually. Have you ever started a project and then realized halfway through, you're like, this is not going to work. I've made a terrible mistake, and I have to start all the way over from the beginning. Those are bad choices. Sometimes you didn't think it all the way through. You didn't think about you know, the source material, you, or, or, or you, know, you just ran into a problem, an unforeseen problem this can happen. And uh, you made a bad choice and you have to start over. So how do you avoid that? Like that is a skill, I think, is to look at a project and say, hey, you know what? I can foresee the problems I'm going to run into. And, and the main way that you are able to understand that is through experience. You have to anticipate the problem. Like you run into a problem like, hey, hey, whoa, hey, I see what you're doing there. Don't do that because uh, you're going to run into this, you know, this color space issue. Or you're going to run into this other issue. So start it out this way and you, know, you won't run into that problem. So I mean, I've rotoscoped stuff and then the shot pans really far, and then the layer's not large enough for the roto to, and you're like, oh, I just rotoed that. It took so long. <laughs> and you're like blinking, like, no, it can't be. <laughs> uh, setting goals. Does anyone know what movie this is? Please. <laughs> thank goodness. Thank goodness. Um, Thank goodness. Uh, so setting goals. Uh, this is a good way to keep track of what things you're learning. You know, goals, the goals can be all sorts of things, but like in terms of software, 
where do you want to be? You know, I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to do this fast. I want to be able to know this program. Think right now, think, okay, this week I'm going to you know, do something productive. You know, think in, in two months, in three months. If you don't think about the time at which you're going to be doing stuff and focus on how long it's going to take, that year is going to go by and you're going to be like, you know, I should have done something last year. It would have been great. <laughs> So, okay, we're gonna take a little break here. Okay, so I have a demo reel uh, I thought we'd uh, take a look at. Let's see here. second. This isn't the right one. This is the right one. <laughs> All right, guys, you're going to see something no one in the world has ever seen. It should not be seen, but we're going to see it. <laughs> okay, let's watch this thing. Standard definition. Okay, let, let me explain. Let me explain. Uh, first of all, you see that cross is off at the end with the kids? Faded out, not bad. Okay, here's the thing, all right? You think that's bad, all right? Some of those companies hired me to make those videos. All right, uh, let's move on. So, get that out of your mind, okay? All right, on the count of three, you have forgotten that. One, two. All right, uh, this is the next one. Getting a camera. I think, I don't know what you guys are here for, but everyone should have a camera. Uh, even the like, media guys in the back are doing the uh, sound. Get a camera. If you're into visual effects especially, because a camera is the best way to learn about physics, is the best way to learn about composition, light, shadow, uh, setting up shots. If you can you know, understand depth of field, the way, you know, diffraction, chromatic aberration, all these real phenomena that we all try to, you know, emulate in our visual effects program, get a camera and you'll see exactly how it works. So, like, honestly, with the price of cameras, there's no excuse. Everyone, go get one right now. <laughs> Toby McDonald, everybody. <laughs> Take it easy, buddy. Take it easy, all right? Uh, don't let your tools define your style. Has anyone ever seen this movie? Yeah. This is uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean movie. <laughs> uh, it's very good, very good. Johnny Depp is a genius in it, of course. Uh, so what do I mean? What do I mean? Don't let the software define your style. Have you ever used a preset and didn't change it that much? <laughs> it's okay, it's okay. Uh, but one thing is, when you're starting a project, it's great to have a vision. Have an idea of what you want it to look. Forget about plugins. Forget about you know, exact, you know, ex some preset or something. Have a vision of what you want it to be. And then when you get into the program, then you can start manipulating what you have to look like what you want it to look. Don't let the aesthetic of the program you're using take over your style. Like, hey, that looks like it was made with that, or it looks like you used that plugin, or whatever. You know, there's always ways to 
add your, your, you know, your touch to the video, your touch to the plugin to make it your own and make it uh, uni unique and original. So just really be thinking about that. And then people won't call you out in videos. You know, I put my demo reel up and I'm like, hey, this is all video copilot tutorials. <laughs> Take it easy, all right? I just, you know, no substitute for experience. I thought, uh, I couldn't find a picture for this, so we just put some text on there. But this is really important. You know, you, you look at a tutorial, you watch it, you're like, hey, yeah, I got it, this is great. I got it. But no, you, you really need experience. You need to get out, you need to film something, you need to, you know, work on some shots that don't have a step-by-step -step manual. Work on some stuff and you can then say, hey, do I really know how to figure this out? Do I really know how to deal with some of these issues? Because I'm gonna have to combine tutorial number 96 with number 107 and, oh my gosh, I'm gonna have to go all the way back to 2008, the DNR Lace. All right. <laughs> You never know. All right, let's see here. Next one. It's good. Have you guys ever been asked to do a project, a design, that you thought, personally, it was the worst idea in the world? <laughs> Two hands over here, this guy. Wait, raise your hand if you have. Come on, have you ever been like, are you sure that's what you want me to do? <laughs> and you have two choices, obviously. You could say, uh, with all due respect, sir, I know you pay my checks, but please, this is the worst idea you've ever had. Let's not do it. We'll save the company I'm right now. Or you can say, hey, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it, and, and I'm going to show them how stupid this idea is. <laughs> and then they get to see it for themselves. So here's what you do. You can go in your room, computer on, turn your music on. You start working on the design. You're like, oh my god, so bad. <laughs> They're going to love this. <laughs> so you render it out. You put it on like a floppy disk or something. Run across the room, you give it to the guy, you're like, all right, guys, I, uh, whew, I got it done. It took a long time, but uh, watch it. So they call in all the people, hey, get Tom, get Brian, Brian, and there's Kevin, get everything. Let's watch it, turn it up. And we start watching it, and you're just like this. <laughs> and they're watching it. Mm hmm, mm hmm, mm hmm. Mm hmm. So, Brian, uh, how long did you work on this? Uh, two, two days, sir. I, you know, I worked, I worked a lot, lot, last night a lot, too. Okay. So I want to tell you something, Brian. What's that? This is the best work you've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now, how do you really stand out? Um, how do you stand out? Let's see. Taking risks. He's in this like 10 more times, so don't worry. <laughs> uh, you know, this kind of goes to, you know, the idea of standing out and how do you get people to notice your work? You know, like, um, is this guy named Peter Quinn here? Hello. Where is he? Hand, hand up. Peter Quinn. I was going to use him as an example because he made a very clever, very fun demo reel. Did anyone see this? It was this spoof demo reel of sort of the cliches of design. Anyone see this? I was going to play it, but I didn't want to be like, hey, that's my work. I'm like, sorry. <laughs> It's a spoof of copyright infringement. Um, <laughs> take it easy, it's a joke. Uh, no, but he created this demo reel and it showed a lot of the tropes of design, like a planet and like, you know, like a hipster room. I don't know what he called it, but uh, just here's the thing. It was extremely well done, all right? It kind of made fun of some of the tropes, but it was like, hey, this guy's pretty good. This, this is good stuff, this is high quality stuff. So, and, and I think it got like, it's got like over 500,000 views. A lot of people checked it out. I'm sure, you know, he's got some work at it, right? Yeah. Just say, yeah. See, one guy <laughs> said, I'll hire you. Uh, <laughs> but the point is, he did something clever. He did something original and he got noticed for it. You know, now if I do that, I'm like, oh man, that's a great idea. I'm going to do the exact same thing he did. Is that going to stand out as much as what he did? So, the advice would be to try to think of a unique way to get your idea out there. You know, I, I ran into somebody uh, uh, just at just an after party of some event, and he was like, Andrew, uh, you know, I'm, I'm learning After Effects, I'm learning 3D, and, you know, I, want, I, need, I need to get a demo reel together. You know, I need a demo reel, and, like, I have to, and I need to, like, hurry and get it done fast. Like, what, what do you recommend? And I said, well, how much time do you have? I said, like, three or four months, right? So I said, forget about a demo reel. 
don't do a demo reel. I said, just make one video, make like one 25 second video that's like awesome. Like just, it could just be the style, like a cool thing that inspires you, you know, like a cool video with some cool sound design music, like something that people would say, hey, do you guys see this guy's thing? It's really cool. And he's like, no, I don't, I don't think that'll work. I just want to have a, I want to have a generic demo reel like everyone else. <laughs> and I'm like, go with that. Uh, no, the last part didn't happen. Also, the whole story's made up. <laughs> <laughs> and we're moving on. Okay, uh, Fringe and what helped me stand out. So again, I try to uh, share some of the stories of, you know, how I got my break and things like that. So when I first, uh, okay, so I'm making tutorials, right? And all of a sudden, I get an email from somebody claiming to be J.J. Abrams of Bad Robot. It was highly suspicious. Now, recently I had just watched Mission Impossible 3, which he directed, and I, and I happened to have watched the director's commentary, and there was a shot in the movie, I don't know if you guys remember it, where the bad guy's injecting some poison pill into his nose, He's like, you know. And J.J. is describing in the commentary that it was a problem, because the actor was shoving something into Tom Cruise's nose, and that was a problem for, you know, that's a Tom Cruise problem, so that's an everyone problem. <laughs> and JJ's talking about this, and he's saying, hmm. So he came up with this like ingenious idea. He said, what if we paint Tom's hand to look like the older actor and just have Tom do it? So they shoot a reverse over the shoulder, so it looks like the other guy's hand, but he's just doing it to himself. He's got like a sleeve on, a false sleeve, and I was like, hey, that's genius, right? So backstory, okay? Context. You guys with me? So I'm looking at the email thinking, there's no way. So I write back, I'm like, well, first of all, I'm like, you know, just in case it is, I'm like, you know, thank you, you know, it's an honor, I, I watch your films. Um, is this really JJ? And if so, whose hand is injecting the poison pill into Tom Cruise? <laughs> <laughs> so, he, <laughs> so he writes back. It was Tom's hand. It's me, he said, you know. <laughs> and uh, so that was a fun, fun story. So we started uh, emailing and chatting, and, and I was just like, hey, you know, like, I would, you know, he watched tutorials of mine. I was like, this is crazy, you know. Wow, you know. So I said, if you need some help or you're working on some project, like, I'm, like, available. Like, let me know. So one day he calls me and says, hey, uh, we got this show. It's called Fringe. And... Uh, we're trying to see, you know, we don't have a lot of time. Um, are you interested in maybe taking a look at the title sequence? You know, like taking a look. I don't know what he's saying. I think what he's saying is, if what you make is really bad, then thank you for taking a look at it. <laughs> no, and to be perfectly fair, like, and obviously I still worked with JJ, and like, he is a great boss and a great guy to work for. And uh, so if he's watching this, you know, he allows me to be creative. And I'll tell you, so let me, let me finish the story. So, so I go to Paramount, go through the gates, and I uh, go up to the office, and uh, I meet him there, and um, you know, it's like, it's crazy. And he's like, hey, let's watch. So we looked at the fringe thing, and he's like, hey, how you doing? He's like, you want, some, you want something to eat? And I'm like, uh, yeah, you know, picks up the phone. He's like, hey, get Kramer Burger. Who's he talking to? <laughs> so then he's like, hey, uh, you want to see the Star Trek trailer? And this is before the movie came out. It was like, even before the trailer came out. You want to see the Star Trek trailer? We're cutting it over there. Over there? He's like, yeah, you want to see it? And I was like, yeah, all right. So we go in this room, you know, it's edit bay, and make me the editor. And I'm like, it's not done yet. There's some green screen shots, you know, but here, you know, and they play it. And I'm just like, wow, this is amazing, you know. So I got a chance to see that. And I'm like in the movie studio, like insane. So I'm, we're looking at the French intro. I actually had worked on some ideas, and I kind of showed him some stuff. And I just spent the day kind of just noodling with some ideas. And I showed him, and he said, oh, this is cool. Maybe we'll try this, maybe we'll try that. And so I spent the next, like, three or four days working on the original Fringe title sequence. And, you know, we kind of went back and forth with notes. Um, you know, he, you know, what, what's great about working with him is that it's, there's not this, like, feeling of, like, oh, I don't want him to hurt my feelings because he doesn't like something or, like, we just, right away, we just got, like, the idea was to make this thing as good as it could be. And so I did the project. We, we deliver it. And, and it was, like, really, really tight before the, actually the first episode aired. And so, and I'm at home, I remember very distinctly, watching Fringe, title sequence comes on, created by Andrew, I mean, 
It was insane, okay? And my mom watched it, so all that cool stuff. It, I'm not, I'm not going to lie and say, like, mm, I'm above all that. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and so a couple months later, so I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this part just because it's sort of relevant. Like, I didn't expect to be paid, and nor did we talk about any, like, payment for the intro. Because I just figured, for me, it was, it was a risk of an opportunity that really made sense for me. You know, I'm making tutorials, I have the time, they're, they're just, it all made sense. Like, I'm not saying work for free, because, you, you know, you guys all know that kind of conversation, but there are just certain opportunities that make sense, um, and certain ones that you should always be, you know, be careful about. But anyway, so about two months later, he gives me a call and says, would you like to do the title sequence for Star Trek? <laughs> I'm like, I mean, I'll check my schedule, but... <laughs> but I don't even have a schedule. So anyway, so I, I get involved with that, and, uh, and, and that we did have a budget, you know, and, and we, we got some of my buddies together, Bobby Hummel, uh, there's a camera guy right here who helped out, and we just, you know, went crazy in, in like this room in my house, and we had like servers, and you know, just, we were just grinding, you know, and, uh, and again, now my work was going to be in a feature film in movie theaters, it was, you know, it was amazing. And, and, and the, to finish the story off in the most positive way ever, two years later after I did the Fringe intro, I got a call from the accounting department at the Fringe people saying, hey, we got this check for you. Where do we send it? <laughs> so, all right. So anyway, uh, you know, making tutorials helped me stand out. You know, the, all the work, like I didn't, I'm not thinking, hey, directors are going to see my tutorials and this is going to all work out. You know, I'm just thinking, hey, I love doing this. this it, it's like going in the direction of what you love doing and, and, then, and people will just take notice. People will take notice of passionate people and of people who work hard and, and, and do really good stuff. Those are the people that get taken notice of and, you know, that should be, you know, the lesson in itself. So, um, okay, so, and, and like I was saying, so we all have access to tutorials information and what is going to set you guys apart from all the other people who have access to a lot of the same information? You know, how do, how do you rise above, you know? Um, what is the unique thing that's going to work for you? You know, and I, and I don't know how to answer that other than and to use some of that creativity, you know, that you put into your work and think about how can you make yourself stand out. So. Motivation. You know, you guys are here. That's, again, that's a really good sign. You guys are motivated. You're here. Um, what's going to motivate you in the future? You think in 10 years, 20 years, Am I going to be like grinding as hard? Like, you know, you get busy on a project. You start working on something. You don't have time to watch that tutorial. You don't have time to, you know, see that new feature. Um, like, I remember it was a sad day when, you know, like, I used to go to NAB and, like, see all the new cameras. And then one year, I was just like, oh, I don't have time to, like, go look. There's so many different cameras now. I feel like I'm losing pace. You know, luckily, there's guys like Philip Bloom doing all these video reviews and stuff so you can experience that stuff because, it, you know, it, it got a little tricky because there's a lot of, of content, of information, like I want to know what the new software is, the new features, the new cameras, the new lenses. So um, you really want to think about how you can maintain that motivation in the future because in order to stay at that top level, you know, you have to just keep up on it and keep working to improve your skills. <laughs> I think following your dreams, following your heart, Bullshit. <laughs> All right, there I said it. It is. It is. Because the secret is hard work. And you guys know that. You know, you could say, mm, uh, you know, I really hope and wish. It just takes hard work. You have to focus, you have to be ambitious, you know, you have to be the one you know, staying up, learning that stuff, practicing, getting your skills sharp. You know, that's really what it takes. And, you know, don't, it's like, you watch a motivational speech, you watch a, a motivational video, a motivational song, you know, these are like the candy bars of motivation. These are just the sugar high of like, oh, I feel great, I'm going to do this. And then like the next day, you're like, oh, Breaking Bad. <laughs> I got like three episodes saved up. I think I'm going to sit this one in, you know. So think about that. 
You know, think about what you could be doing to sharpen your skills, you know, instead of what somebody else might be doing and, and you know, they're after your job. So dreams. Leo, sorry, buddy. <laughs> um, how do you avoid getting burned out? You know, I'm talking all this motivation. Like, I'm going to do it. I got a six pack of uh, energy drinks. It's going to be amazing. Also, be careful of that, okay? <laughs> how do you avoid get, getting burned out? Um, this is, this is a challenging one, you know, because you, you want to be able to, like, keep up with, you know, everyone that's, like, working all night. It's like, hey, how do these guys staying up so much? And we've all put in, like, late nights, and, uh, you know, we can't do that forever, you know? And we shouldn't have to, first of all. We I mean, really shouldn't have to. I think the amount of work that we already put into it, I mean, to, to have to be pushed to the point where, you know, you sabotage in Jurassic Park. <laughs> It just ain't right. That's all I'm saying. So, so you know, how do you how do you avoid that? What are some things to think about? Um, you know, hobbies I think are really good. Having having an escape. You know, you talk about time wasting. You know, not everything is a waste of time. You know, being able to get out, go for a walk, um, you know, travel. Like, just there are things that will give you more inspiration, more creative. You know, you ever work on something and you're just grinding your gears. And you come back to it, and you're like, oh, okay, you know. You, you know, you just reach that point where it's better to get up, you know, walk away for a minute. This is, this is another kind of interesting, uh, you know, it's like you get burned out because you're doing the same thing over and again. You're like, man, these gas station video, you know, screens are so good, but I don't know if I could do any more of them, sir. <laughs> it's like, we need more. Arco's opening up across the street. They gotta, they gotta entertain the viewers. <clears throat> The gas pumpers. What do you call that? Gas pumper? It's never been discussed. <laughs> All right, find your passion in unexpected places. Uh, I know guys who were industrial designers, cars, stuff like that, and now they are creature designers in like ZBrush, creating like insane monster creatures. D did they ever think that's what they were going to do? Probably not. But when you experience new things, you start realizing, like, hey, you know, this is kind of cool. I kind of dig this matte painting, you know, this other thing. There's so many fun jobs in the visual effects, in the motion design world, that if you feel like, oh, all I want to do is movie titles, or all I want to do is this, you might be missing out on some really fun opportunities. So, and I, I say that to visual effects and motion designers. Like, I know they're sort of interchangeable, you know, because motion graphics are very visual effects oriented nowadays. But you should always be looking at what other opportunities and things that you might be interested in. And to talk about the guy, the creature designer, when you think about a creature, has anyone heard the expression form follows function? It's like the idea that it looks the way it does because that's how it works. And when you're doing a creature, how like perfectly relevant is that? You know, instead of having a creature that has strange, strange, you have a creature that, oh, I see, that does that so it can fly, or that it can, you know, it has hearing there so, you know, so they can swim, you know. There's all these reasons that you can design a creature based on the function of the creature. And, you know, I think we've seen that in, in movies, like the creature design in movies, like, insane. Like, pretty, pretty, uh, here we go. Evolve. Uh, this is, this is the last point, and this is something that, you know, it's kind of the theme throughout, which is how do, you, how, do you, how do you expand what you do? How do you expand what the, you know, with what the industry is doing? How can you keep up with it? And this, this is the main thing. You, you know, one, one thing, diversify. <laughs> you don't want to just be doing science when you could be selling meth. <laughs> Anybody do any uh, video editing? Like, how about motion design also? Like, everyone is just doing more, right? It's like, the editor isn't like the editor anymore. Hey, I'm gonna need you to send me those graphics. I'm like, you're gonna need to make those graphics. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the difference. Uh, and, and, and that's just the reality. So what, what tool sets can you add to your arsenal to make you more valuable. You're like, hey, uh, you know, Bob's doing a great job, but does he know how to make HDRI environment maps? I do, you know, oh, hmm, 
we might need that. So increasing your skill set, obviously, you know, it's something that's going to make you more valuable. And, and just understanding that is the reality, is that everybody is just the jack of all trades in a way. And uh, it's not a bad thing because maybe you'll find, like I said, you'll find something that you really enjoy doing more. And you won't, you know, those gas station videos, you'll be like, finally, something else. Like supermarket videos. <laughs> Beyond digital, look at Tom Cruise looking all good up there. All right, <laughs> so beyond digital, right? I know we're all in front of our computer. This is probably the longest I've ever spent not in front of a computer. <laughs> <laughs> and my eyes are wide open. I can't focus far, but it's great. <laughs> you know, as I was saying before, it's, it's good to get out. It's good to travel. It's good to read books. It's good to you know, draw. There's so many of these things that we feel like we're getting that, you know, that escape on the computer. Ah, you know, I'm reading an article or I'm, you know, looking at someone's Tumblr pictures or some nature hike they went on. You need to get out there. You need to just find some other, like, I, I had a chance to go to Japan for this uh, After Effects kind of seminar thing. And not only was it the first time I ever went to Japan, it was the first time I ever went out of the country. I had to get my passport. I got to the airport. Passport, the lady's like looking at it. She's like, you didn't sign your passport. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Uh, so, <laughs> I mean, obviously I wasn't that aggressive. I was like. <laughs> it's a pen. <laughs> so, yeah. Th th think about, you know. Closing your computer occasionally, occasionally. <laughs> Thinking outside of the box. Okay, so there's TVs, there's movies, but how many other opportunities for you guys are out there now? We have the internet. I think it's gonna be successful. <laughs> I think people are digging it, maybe. What opportunities are there online? I mean, we see YouTube, you know, everybody used to make fun of YouTube, you know, and maybe they still do, but you have to admit, People are watching videos on YouTube. People are, are all over these various video sites. There are opportunities. Like, and, 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 and specifically, some of these YouTube videos, not, not the greatest effects I've seen you know, in a YouTube video. Not that you expect much. But we, you know, there's an opportunity there. When, when certain channels are able to monetize, then there's money to increase the production value. And then there's you know, a budget to hire a designer. There, like, there are opportunities. I'm not saying that's, that's what you want to do or that's what you should do. But, Netflix is another great example. Like they're, they're looking to create more original content. Um, you know, I don't know if there's any like short story you know, directors, people who want to create stuff, but there really are more opportunities out there, and you don't have to always go through the gates of Hollywood or the gates of the TV industry. So definitely watch out for that crazy little girl, but uh, you know, think outside that box. Uh, when I was about seven or eight, and I think this picture is around that time, I still have like baby teeth. Wow. Mickey Mouse in the house. It's probably like a knockoff shirt, actually. <laughs> you know, there's something I remember very distinctly is my dad was a freelance writer for a sports fishing magazine. And he brought home one day an Apple computer. Something like that. I'm sure some of you have seen older ones. Some of you don't even know what that is. That's okay. <laughs> and it was in the house, and, and, I'm, you know, and my dad let me play on it. I'm getting on there. There's like hypercard stack. I think there's like an early cork design program. And I'm just getting on, I'm opening settings, sound recorder. I'm like just playing with all. And, and I think it was just black and white. Like it was not even gradients in the pixels. And one of the things I remember like very distinctly was a video playing of a lion inside of hypercard stack. I played it. And, it. and think about all of the computer power it had to do to like create all the grayscale values in that video. And I was like looking at the pixels and the pattern, and I just thought it was the greatest thing. And hypercard, by the way, if you don't know, is a program, it's kind of like Director or Flash. It's, it's like PowerPoint, if you will. It has buttons. You can like go from one page to another page. So I remember making like, I guess little websites where I have the video of the line. It would say, hey, do you like lions? Yes or no? And you could say, Yes, and I'm like, yeah, me too, it would say on the page. Or you say no, and why not? <laughs> so anyway, 
I, like, I just loved playing on this thing. I would get on it, get, you know, open up all the programs. I had files and documents. Like, I had a folder with my name on it, with my stuff on it. One day, wake up, and the computer is gone. And my dad lost his job, and the computer went back, and I didn't have that computer. I was like, maybe I wasn't sensitive about the fact that my dad lost his job, <laughs> but maybe I didn't fully understand that the computer was gone. And, you know, for a seven-year-old or eight-year-old, I guess, at that time, it, you know, it was somewhat devastating. And I was thinking, gosh, it was so fun to explore. It was so fun to play on that. I didn't feel like I got through all of the programs. And that feeling of not being able to, you know, to learn and to explore, you know, was just, it, it was odd. It was odd. And it wasn't until about three, maybe it was like five years later, that the house we were living in at the time had this massive, major, like, construction defect. My mom told me that there's this like lawsuit and there's this settlement thing and depending on how bad it is, you know, maybe if there's any leftover money from the repairs, you know, we can get a computer. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I hope this house is so screwed up. <laughs> and lucky for me, it was. <laughs> so my parents got like a check for like seven, eight thousand dollars and most of that went to some repairs and some modifications. And, uh, you know, after going through like a million Circuit City ads, I found a computer and we got it. And, you know, I remember just like, it was the greatest feeling. And I felt like this is an opportunity to be able to get on here and to create and to be creative. And my, my parents, you know, they were so supportive of me. And, uh... You know, this is an opportunity to be in art and create and do this for a living. So there's absolutely no reason that we shouldn't be in this 100%. It's amazing. I love what I do, and I hope you guys do, too. Thank you, and I'm Andrew Kramer.